last two sessions, we were talking about the troughs. And we talked about what's the troughs, and we said that, okay, we have something like this. And if I have it like that, then all the forces are applying on, let's say, applying on the joint. It's the truss. So basically in the truss, what I have is that all members in the truss all member are two force member. So basically if I have a truss all the forces applying on the joints. So no forces would be applied on the member itself. Now one says that what if instead of I have a force applying on the joint, the force also applied on the member as well. So it's not going to be only at the joint. So for example, if I have Something like this. Example. Something like that. And then instead of having the force on the applied here, I'm going to have, for example, force applied here oh, on the joint. And the, another force, for example, applied here. And another moment, for example, applied here. So this would be called frame. In frame, some of the members are multi force member. So the frame. Some of the members are multi force, usually two or more members. So there'll be three forces or four forces or more applying on that. So for example, here, if you look at each of these two, for example, if you look at, uh, let's call it ABC, or call it ABC. If you look at, at AB, there's some force, there's a reaction force at the A, there are some external force at the B, and some moment in the middle. The same here, if I look at the BC, there's a force at B, there's a reaction at C, and there's a force somewhere on the member. These are frames, so these are not like a truss, so these are not true force member anymore. So this is what we call the frame, and when we have the true force member, like the truss, we usually make it very easy to analyze it, because we know all the direction, so we know that every force in in the truss is in the direction of the member. So it makes it easy. And since all the force are in the direction of the, the uh, member, usually you don't need to deal with any moment. Because all the moments will cancel. They're all joints. So no moment there. All the forces in the direction. So it makes it relatively easy to solve. When it comes to the frame, then all of them is gone. No more. <laughs> Uh, this is no more the injection of that, and no more we, are, we can get rid of the moment, and we have to uh, work more all of So, if I go ahead and redraw that in paper to see how we can actually analyze it. So, Let's 
Brasil com a casa. Salto lógica. Let's go. A. And B. And C. And. So look at that. If you look at the point A and point C, you can see that the A and the C. So I have two members connected here with the joint at the knee, two members, the A, B, and B, C. And if I go ahead and put a reaction there, I would have a Y A X C Y C X Both of them are pink Okay So right away you can see that What was this condition if I have More Unknown that I can solve going to be indeterminate, right? But I have four unknown. Assume I know, assume the P is one toss. Let's assume. Can I solve that? No, because I have four unknown and only three equilibrium equation. So I cannot do anything with that, with, with whatever knowledge you have so far. So I have to find a way uh, to solve. And the most uh, problem with your frames is the case. The number of unknown you have is more than the equilibrium equations. Usually it happens like that in your frame. That's not fun. That's not fun. But, so when we want to do that, the only way that we can solve it is that we have, like the truss. What did we do in the truss? We open it. So we are just going to disassemble it to two parts, to A, B, and B, C. So it's going to be A, B, and the joint, then B, C. So the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to put all the external forces that I know on that. So the external forces that I have was AX, AY, CY, CX. And I have the P applying there. Does that P stand for anything, or is it kind of just there? For some reason, I usually myself prefer to use F for some reason. 
usually that Air Force chief would use that for the pressure. But that's in the sports. Next is that, so I have point B at the B. Whatever is going to be applied at the B here, the opposite of that, so assume I am going to have, let's say, I'm going to have internal force at the B, Bx and Bx. The opposite of that would be applied on the joint. So it's going to be Bx, By. And then the same here. If I have a Bx here, I have to have the opposite of that there. If I have a By here, I have to have the opposite of that there. And then if this is the case, I'm going to have the opposite of them on the joint. A joint's got a lot of overlap. Yes. So just remember, whatever, these are the internal force, and we don't know the internal force in that, so whatever is the force at that joint, assume we have two components. Whatever we ask you for that component, the opposite of that is going to be on the other end. And you don't need to know the direction. So through the direction, the opposite would be on the other end. So now, how many unknown I have after I open it up? So two at the A at the support A, two at the support C, and two at the joint. So it's gonna be six. Oh yeah, P is known. But P is known. But P is known. The external force there. So one, two here, yeah. three, four, five, six. Oh yeah. So we have six. Now if I go ahead and write the equilibrium equation for each half, how many, are not, how many equations are we going to have? Three. three here, three here, six. So, at the original condition, four unknown three equation cannot solve it. Now, six unknown six equation, I can solve it. So what I would do that uh, I would for A B I have three equilibrium equation. Equation. The same for B C. For B C. So three, three. So, equation. And so total total equations. Number of equation would be six. Total. Number of unknown to be six. So 
So I will end up with six equations, six on one. So the procedure to solve it is that the first step, and first step unlike the other ones is sometimes it's doable, sometimes not doable. Remember, the first step in every problem that we had so far was go ahead and find the reaction of the supports. Correct? For the frame, sometimes you can, sometimes you cannot. So consider the entire And if it is possible, find reaction of supports. As I said, it's not possible all the time. So just for that simple example we had, it's not possible to find. The second one, like the truck, disassemble it to its member and its joints. So. I will take it apart. So, frame. The reason I said to joints because sometimes we might need the joints uh, to write uh, equilibrium equation there. For example, look at here, uh, everything seems okay. If I had a force applying on that joint, then these but not be that simple, and I had to write this equilibrium equation for the joint as well. Like the like the truss. Remember, if I had a joint and force was on the joint, was on the joint, I would write the equilibrium equation for the joint. Here, for the joint, it doesn't give us anything. Sometimes it does. Then put all the external forces on joints and members. Just remember, forces on one member would be opposite of the forces on the other one. Okay? So forces, internal forces on one
So after we put the in, ex, internal, external forces, we will put the internal forces. Uh, on the total member. Just remember that the internal force. If the BY go to the right, on the other one BY should go to the left, BX. If BY go up, on the other one should go down. Rewrite it in a way that it makes sense. Then the next part is that, like the truss that we start to write the equilibrium for each joint. Now we rewrite the equilibrium for all the mem for each member and each joint. So. equation for anything that you can. Again, here I didn't write it for the B because it doesn't give me anything. It just gives me zero equal to zero. But if it gives you, you write the equilibrium equation uh, for all of them. And then six, solve all Equations on one. So there is one point that I want to to pay attention to that, that it just makes it easier. If you miss it, it's not going to make it impossible to solve it, but to make it easier. Look for two, mem two force members. In the frame, you might have a two force member as well. Look at here, AB. AB is a two force member, correct? So if AB is a two force member, it means that that internal the bx by should be along that a so it gives you the direction of the force so you have to solve one this equation because you already have the direction so instead of having bx and by you only need to have solve for the b which is going to be in direction of the a b so as i said if you miss it you are end up doing a little bit more calculation if you find it you will make it easier so in frame, look for two force member. This 
you find it, remember that in true force member, in care null force is in the direction of member. So for every two force member you find, one less equation you have to solve. So usually, uh, if at, the, at the very beginning you can find it, this usually make it easier. Again, if you missed it, that's a big deal. You just need to probably do a little bit more work. So first let's look at another simple example.
So, assume I have that and I want to unload it. The first step, if it is possible, we try to find the reaction of the support. In their case, if we can or we cannot, we have to put the reaction of the support there because those are external forces. Okay? So regardless that we can find it or not, we're going to put it. If you can find it, we put a number for that. If you cannot find them, we just uh, assume it. So if I assume this is going to be the AX and it's going to be AY. The next thing is that I'm going to disassemble it to its member and its joints. Again, because in, in the joints that I don't have any forces in the joints, the joints itself probably is not going to help me. It's not going to give me anything. If you have a force on the, on the joint, then the joint will uh, give you additional uh, equation. So first I'm going to draw this part. So, And I have the, this pulley here. As a pulley, you can look at it. There's a pulley there. And this is, so this is a V. And this is this pulley here. Okay, so I disassembled it, I took it apart. Now I'm gonna put all the external forces that I can have. So here I have the AX and A1. Look at here, at the C, at the joint C, there's an interaction between the pulley and this, the main body, correct? So there's going to be waters here, if I go ahead and say it's going to be the C, Y, and C, X here. It's going to be the opposite of that, C, X, and C, Y. The same for the B. At the B also, I'm going to have two reactions, whatever it is. So, assume I have a BX and BY here. I'm just assuming the direction. As long as I put the opposite direction on the other side, I'm good. If I have that, I'm going to have the opposite of that, Bx, Bi, on the B.
What else there? So it's 75 pounds, so it's gonna be it's gonna be 75 here and it's gonna be 75 here, correct? Cable have force with it, so tension. Definitely has because I'm pulling it down, and that's the cable that I'm going to get you to fall down. Oh, because that one is a, that's a pin joint against the wall, so yeah. that would let it rotate otherwise. Otherwise, yeah. It's just, so, difference is going to be the force in that. Okay. We don't know how much it is, but there is a force in that, so this is going to be. Gonna be T. This is gonna be T as well. And then, so since we don't have a number on that, we can't do anything. But then I have, I, I will write the equilibrium equation for this. I will write the equilibrium equation for this. I will write the equilibrium equation for this. And then I will solve all of them together. Would point B on the structure have a different equilibrium equation on a final than point B for the pulley? These two? Yeah. yeah. But these two has the 75 piece one does. But it starts that the force will be applied on the pulley and then the pulley apply the force on. Just to make it a little bit more interesting, for example, you could have just add one force on the pulley itself, not the rope. Just hang something to the pulley itself. said at the beginning if you want to consider the entire things first and see if you can find the AX or a Y or not. So you can consider the entire object to see if you can find the AX or not. So the, at the beginning, because where are the supports? The support is at A and at D. Just replace that. This with the support, replace that with the T. Just uh, solve the entire uh, object to see if you can find the unknown for the support of it. As I said, in frame, sometimes you can't, sometimes you can't. But since it doesn't have a number, so we cannot do it like this. I want you to see the procedure. Any question?
this example. I want to find how much force P I have to put here, how much force should I use at the P2, uh, that I can counter at 600 newton. the P, or basically tension in the rope, how much tension in the rope if this is the system line. So again, you have the, the members that are multiple uh, uh, forces applying on that, so I have to have this assembly. I start with the C, so if I, it is the C. forces apply on the C. There's going to be the R that wants to hold in the up. And then I would have would, this is an argument. Would that be a tension force since it is a string? It's a tension in the first. Yeah, I, yeah. So R is this. R, R is for that one that is connected to the ceiling, so that's the one that's actually holding it in place. Yeah. Then, if I cut it from here, assume I cut it from here, I cut it from here, and I cut it from here. So, if I cut it from above the pulley, the only thing I have is R. If I cut it below the pulley, I cut this stroke, I cut this, and I cut this. So, I'm going to have 2P. And I have whatever is in that member between B and C. They will call it, what do we call it? Yeah, I'm going to put it here. I probably will choose another name for it. But OK. 
Okay, so that T is in the BC member. Right? Now I will go ahead and draw the B. If I have a B. So if I have if I cut a B above and bottom of that, if I cut it the V, what I would have? If I cut it here, so whatever I have T here should be the opposite of that applying here. Okay? So from the top, there's only T connected to the V. This one is not connected to the V, so we don't care about that one. So it's not directly connected. From the bottom, there are two tension in the row, so I'm going to have 2P going up. Would that have the same magnitude as the P for C? The same, because the same single row, the tension in the row is going to be uh, the same. Uh, no one realized these but pulleys, they lessen the amount of force required to pull something. So, does that idea thing apply at all in this drawing? Yeah, so, eventually at the end, once it, if it's a 600, can you pull it off with the much less forces? Okay. So, so, that was C, that was B, and the next one is going to be A. So, if I cut the A at the top, there are three ropes that are connected to the, if I cut it at the top, there are three, so it's going to be three P at the top. And then I have, at the bottom of that, I have 600. Right? Now, I can start it from the A. If I start it from the A, or A. Go ahead and say that my Fy is zero, so 3p minus 600 is zero, therefore p is 200 newtons. Then I can go and write for the p. Again, sigma f y is zero, and then I will say that then t minus two p is zero, and t would be four hundred newtons. And then I can try to look for the c. Again, I can write the sigma f y is zero. Write that as 2p if we wanted to? Yes. Okay. And if you consider the entire entire object, 
R is equal to P plus 600. Correct? You can see the entire thing. 200 here, 600 here, so R should be 800. Instead of, I could have, instead of writing it for the C, I could have write it for the entire holy system. The things of the 